Hey everybody, how's it going? Jesus Ramirez here from the Photoshop Training Channel and here we are at yet another YouTube Live. And yeah, I know this is the Photoshop Training Channel and I, I think I've only done maybe one video where I showed Lightroom, maybe, maybe two. But this tip is gonna help you use Lightroom better with Photoshop. So we have this image here and the image doesn't really um, you know, it doesn't matter. The out, the look of the image doesn't matter. So I'm just going to hit auto because again, it's not that important. So there we hit auto. So we, I could have made any adjustments, but auto is going to work for this. So now usually if you want to take an image into Photoshop, what most people tell you to do is go into photo and edit in and edit in Photoshop and it opens up in Photoshop. The keyboard shortcut for that is control E command E on the Mac. And when you press that, the image opens up in Photoshop. Now you can come in here and maybe apply a, you know, like a Gaussian blur or something. The Again, the effect for this tutorial doesn't matter. What matters is the workflow. So there, we, we apply the, the blur and if we save it, um, that becomes a TIFF file. So it's no longer the raw file that I was working with. If I go into Lightroom, you will see that I have a blurry image, but that's not the original image. The .nef file is here. The TIFF file is what I have now. So now I can continue working with the TIFF file, but again, that is not the raw file. So if, I'm gonna delete um, this file for now, so because we don't need it. So I'm just gonna delete that, that, um, that TIFF file. So how do I maintain the link between both Lightroom and Photoshop? So one of the reasons you may wanna do that is, um, here, I have an idea. Well, I'll go into um, an Adobe Stock template. For those of you that don't know, if you press Control N, Command N on the Mac, you have these different tabs on Photoshop CC, and there are different different Adobe Stock templates that you can download. You can see that they're free, 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 free. So the one I download, uh, the one that I opened just now, is where did it go? Uh, it's under Print. I opened this one, Salt and C, and there it is. And I'm just gonna crop it because I don't need to read the instructions. So maybe I'm working on a design and the only reason I opened this up is just so I could show you what I'm about to show you faster and don't worry about recreating a design. Because obviously if you're just working on photography then you're gonna do all your editing on, on Lightroom. But sometimes you may be working on a design and you want to you continue editing your photos in Lightroom as you're working with your design. So I have my design here and Instead of using that edit in feature, like edit in Photoshop in Lightroom or pressing Control E, what I recommend you do is go into File, Placed, Linked, and find that file, the raw file, and bring that in. Click on Place. So it opens up Camera Raw. Don't worry about that. Just press OK. And it brings this file in. I'm going to scale it up. And again, I'm not really worried about the look of the design. This tip is more about the workflow or this little mini tutorial. So I'm going to drag down that down to the end of the to the um, bottom of the layer stack. And I'm going to press T on the keyboard. And I'm just going to change this to London because it's going to bother me if I keep reading San Francisco when it's London, but the rest will leave as is. So now I can I have this file here. But what if I go into Lightroom and I make an adjustment? So maybe I'll make an extreme adjustment so that you can see. So there you go. I bumped up the exposure. Then I go back into Photoshop and that link is not there. The thing that you have to do with Lightroom is that you actually have to use a keyboard shortcut, Control S, Command S on the Mac. Usually that's the keyboard shortcut for saving, but in this case, we're saving to the metadata file, to the sidecar file that Lightroom uses to apply the effects to a photo. So if I hit continue, overwrite settings, and go back into Photoshop, you'll see that that will be updated. So now I can apply an effect in Photoshop. So I can go into, I can maybe apply a layer style. So I can go into, you know, something like a pattern overlay and do one of these patterns that has lines through it. And again, the look really doesn't matter. And actually, you know what? This is not a good idea. I'll, 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 sh I'll keep showing you something and I'll show you what I was about to show you. So then I can come back into Lightroom and I'll hit auto this time and I'll be a little more creative. I'll maybe, make the highlights darker, increase the shadows, clarity, vibrance, and there you go, much prettier picture. And maybe do this bird has some chromatic aberration, so I'm gonna check remove chromatic aberration from lens, lens corrections, 
enable profile corrections and you know that's a much much better picture go back into photoshop and it's not there well once again Control s command s in lightroom override saves it go into photoshop and it updates that um, design so now i can apply filter so i can go into filter blur and again the look of this really doesn't matter it's just for you to see the the power of the workflow so i can blur the image and maybe i can go into filter noise and add noise and i'm just adding filters that are noticeable so that you could see what i'm talking about and these are all smart filters you see this london layer here that's got that little link icon it's a smart object and it's non-destructive of course so i can always maintain those um uh, those filters editable then I can go back into Lightroom and decide that you know what maybe I don't like this look I want a different look like a really hot look and then I can press Control s command s on the Mac in Lightroom press continue once again go into Photoshop and it updates in Photoshop and the one thing that I wanted to also show you is that if I double click on this linked smart object in Photoshop it's going to bring up Lightroom so I can change the temperature in Lightroom to the opposite end which obviously changes the way the image looks if I press OK it changes it in Photoshop if I go into Lightroom it won't be there so what you need to do in Lightroom is going to photo and you click on read metadata from file click on read and it changes in Lightroom. So this is a way that you can maintain the raw file link in Lightroom and Photoshop and make adjustments in either application and it stays as a raw file and it's all non-destructive. So I prefer this workflow than going into photo, edit in, and then you know turning it, turning it into a TIFF file. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. I'm gonna see if there's any questions that you guys came up with as I was working with this so let me see hi everybody hello 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 um, people are asking what the topic is well I just <laughs> finished the tutorial so um, I guess you already saw that um, have I looked at, at affinity as a PS competitor um, well I mean it's a good software in terms of editing photos but in terms of you know it being better than Photoshop it's def in my opinion it's definitely definitely not is not connected to the Creative Cloud, which gives, which gives you connectivity between a bunch of other tools and services. So, at least in my opinion, it's it's not really a good competitor. So, I mean, if if all you if all you care about is making a small adjustment to a photo, I guess it's fine. But if you're a creative professional, then in my opinion, there's no competition. Um, people are saying hello, 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 hello. Uh, thank you, Tracy. I see that you wrote. That's very cool. Some people said, I don't like Lightroom. Yeah, I can understand why people wouldn't like Lightroom. Um, I mean, especially, I don't know what, Bruce, what you do, but, you know, uh, some people don't like Lightroom, and usually those people are probably uh, designers, and even some photographers don't like Lightroom, so that's totally cool. But this workflow is great for those of you that do enjoy Lightroom and Photoshop, and you want to maintain that link. Now, another thing I wanted to say is that... Um, since I was on my trip and I really didn't get a chance to send out an email asking for composite reviews. So I don't have any composite reviews to do today. So um, yeah, so unless somebody like posts a link and I can check it out really quick, I guess I we, we won't be having one of those today. But for those of you that are interested in a composite review in the future, sign up to my newsletter. I usually send out an email usually on Wednesday, a couple days before I know that I'm gonna do one of these. And then you could just reply with an attachment and I can do a review on your composites as we've done in the last couple of weeks. There is also a playlist on my YouTube channel like, uh, labeled um, YouTube live streams, I think it's labeled. And here I'll show you, show you where that is. Let me just open it up. Give me one second, I need to open up the browser and go into my YouTube channel. And I have two windows, that's why I'm looking off to the side. And let me drag that over so that you could see. There you go. So if you go into the playlist, 
you can see these live session recordings and these are all the ones that we've done and this one will be at the top is in chronological order so if you miss the old ones this is where you can watch them i did one um, last week where i showed my very first composite ever and there it is you can kind of see it in the thumbnail and i've done composite reviews i think on two maybe three of these so yeah so check those out if you haven't already let me know if you have any questions about what we've just discussed um and I'll be happy to answer them. Let me see. And what I'll do is I will try to bring the chat over so that you guys could see it if I can. It's not letting me. Here we go. There it is. Because um, in the recording, when YouTube records this and uploads it to my YouTube channel, for some reason, the messages and comments don't go through. So let me see. Um, is this video saved on YouTube? It will be. That's sort of what I just said. Um, Can you explain all these param parameters? I'm not sure what you mean by that. And if you're asking about explaining all the parameters here in Lightroom, then this is definitely not the time and place for that. I guess the basic um, thing I can tell you is that just read the labels and the labels pretty much explain to you what they do and click and drag the slider. So essentially tonality and color. I mean, that's really what you're adjusting in Lightroom. And the chat went away and I'm bringing it back. Here it is. Oh, wow, we got people from Tanzania, Buffalo, New York. Is it I've never used Capture One, so I can't answer that question, Eduardo, so I don't know. Oh, and then Photochopando is here. How's it going? Uh, he says he finally is catching me live since I think he, he left the message a couple days or weeks ago. I can't remember exactly when he left the message saying he never catches these live. But he is here, and I guess I will throw a shout out to him. for the, Let me um, find his YouTube channel so you guys can see him. So if you guys are Spanish speakers, there is a good um, YouTube channel in Spanish that you could watch, Photoshopando, and I'm, I'm going to drag that over. So yeah, check them out. These are Photoshop um, and Lightroom videos in Spanish that you could watch. So you can just click on that subscribe button if you're a Spanish speaker. Talking about Spanish speakers, if you um, are a Spanish speaker, I also have a YouTube channel in Spanish. Um, it's called Videos PTC, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a second. Sorry, I feel like I'm a little slow today, but there I am. So that's my YouTube channel in Spanish for those of you who speak Spanish. Anyway, do you guys have any other um, comments on, or questions? Let me know. If not, I guess we'll just have a short um, video or a short live YouTube stream now just because we don't have any composite reviews today. Uh, one of the questions is how could one be certified by Photoshop? And I think you mean by Adobe. Adobe does run certification programs and you can look that up on, I believe, the Adobe website and they give you references in your area as to take the test to be certified. And usually they also show you where, you're, where you can have, um, you, you can take classes to get certified if you want to get certified. Um, Somebody said, uh, they just missed the topic. Can you repeat it again? Um, well, it's going to be recorded, so you can go back and watch it again. Adam from London, how's it going? I was just there in, uh, I think, March, and I loved it. I went all over England, actually. I was in London, uh, Swindon, Lewis, Brighton, um, a whole, Bath, a whole bunch of places. So I, I really loved England. That was my first time there. I have no idea when Lightroom will support Nikon D850, but Lightroom is doing a lot of updates all the time. So, so yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure when that's coming. Somebody said that I answered their question from earlier in the broadcast. I'm not sure what that question was, but I, I might've missed it or maybe I did, I'm not sure. Um, no, Tracy, no whales, but I do wanna go. Um, it's, it's, it was a very short trip. I was only there for a week and, and I wish I could have gone to more places. But yeah, oh, and one last thing I wanted to show you guys that I just thought about because I saw the, the website here. Oh, by the way, this is the Pluralsight website that I was talking about earlier, or the, the website to the conference where, where I was just at. Adobe Max is coming up next month, and 
Las Vegas, Nevada, and that is probably my favorite conference out of all the ones that I do, just because it's so big and so many people. I think we're expecting about 12,000 people, and there's people like John Favreau and a whole bunch of other cool people. But the reason that I enjoy this conference is that I get to hang out with all my friends. Um, so some people you may know, uh, Corey Barker, Aaron Blaze, uh, Lisa Carney. She's, she does some amazing composites. She did a whole bunch of Hollywood posters. She's really cool. One of my very, very good friends, Glenn Dewis, uh, Sean Dugan. There I am. So uh, a whole bunch of people that I look up to and respect, and uh, they're also friends. Uh, David Blattner, for those of you that are uh, InDesign users, he's a brilliant InDesign user. Chad Emery Concepcion, another very good friend of mine, Chris Converse. And Chris Converse actually has one of the, you can actually look it up on the old, um, I gotta show you, that you guys are gonna like this. Um, I just don't know how I'm gonna be able to find it. I think it's, I think if you go 2016.max, dot adobe.com let me see if that works yeah so if you go 2016.max.adobe.com there is something called uh, max online and you can see all the sessions from adobe max if you find the one from my uh, friend chris converse he's got a really good um session on after effects in photoshop it's it's one of the most original sessions i've seen and and again i'm not going to click through all these links trying to find it but it's in here somewhere and so yeah, so last year he did a great, 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 uh, here you go, Photoshop in After Effects Awesomeness by Chris Converse, uh, using After Effects to create um, effects for Photoshop. It's really, really good, so um, check it out. I was watching it there last year as he presented. So yeah, so a lot of really good speakers at Adobe Max, and as I said, this is the last conference of the year that I'm doing, and I get to hang out with a lot of cool people. Nigel French, which some of you may know. Uh, my good friend, to uh, Tony Harmer, who's in London. One of my best friends, Mark Heaps. So yeah, so it's a, a great, great place to be. I hope that you get to attend. If not, all the sessions are going to be recorded and, and published online, so you'll get to see mine too if you miss it. All right, so yeah, I don't see any new questions and I think I plugged everything I wanted to plug and I showed you the tip that I had in mind for today. And by the way, if I actually did something very similar on my YouTube channel, so this is not really the first time I show this tip, but it's the first time that I show it probably without a lot of extra stuff added onto it. There's another video I did on my YouTube channel where it's essentially the same tip I showed today, but it just, I felt like that it took way too long and some people got lost. So I try to simplify it for this live stream. So I hope you enjoyed it. So if there's any more, so if there's not any more comments or questions, then I guess I'll speak to you next time. There will be a new tutorial on Monday. So what I'm trying to do now, just to give you guys a heads up, I'm trying to do a tutorial on Monday and Wednesdays and do a live, YouTube feed on Friday. So I've been keeping it up for almost a month now. So hopefully I can keep it up longer. So yeah, if you haven't, um, if you're watching this and haven't subscribed, then feel free to click on that subscribe button. And also don't forget to subscribe to me on Instagram, JR from PTC. Thank you so much for being here with me on this Saturday afternoon for me. Maybe it's Saturday evening for you, or maybe even Sunday. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys again very, very soon. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye.